Hello, hello to you, my fellow printer dreams. You're very welcome to another episode of Community News from 3D Jake. All the stories from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Grads, home to the ugliest art gallery in the world. Here's what's going on in 3D printing right now. Okay, first up, and this is fascinating, a team at MIT and the University of Texas have created a 3D printer that is smaller than a coin. It's what they call a chip-based 3D printer. The printer is comprised of a photonic chip that illuminates a liquid resin, and it does this with a volumetric method. So if you guys don't know what volumetric 3D printing is, this is when several digital light sources are used to illuminate and photocure a resin into an object all at the same time. So there are no layers, the entire object is just printed together in one go. And because of this, the print time is very, very, very quick. It is still in its infancy, but what is really cool about this is that they have used a volumetric 3D printing process on this tiny, tiny printer that's smaller than the coin, and it doesn't have any moving parts. This is so cool. I thought the Positron was cool being portable like that, or that, that other tiny resin printer. Um, Uncle Jesse did a video about it quite recently. It's like this tiny 3D printer that's this size, you assemble it yourself. Uh, what's it called? Tiny maker, tiny maker. But now we have a printer that is smaller than a coin. Obviously the uses of this are quite specific. Um, don't expect a coin based printer on your desk anytime soon, but this is really cool. Okay, what is next? So Modbot came out with a video about Hula. These are anti-vibration feet for your printers. And these are specifically for Bamboo Lab printers, but they can be customized for other printers too. There are like tons of designs for anti-vibration feet uh, that you can get on printables and thingiverse and things and such. Um, these differ somewhat in that they are omnidirectional. They draw inspiration from those seismic base isolators that are used to uh, protect buildings from earthquakes. Modbot had mixed results with these, and I haven't tried the, the Hula feet, but I have tried lots of other feet with also mixed results. Um, I, would, I would love to get your opinion on printer feet in general because I just kind of stopped testing them after after some time. I can not really see any major difference with or without them. And actually, like if you look at the printers behind me, these all use this thick ceramic tile as a base, which is extremely heavy. This is actually for safety as well as rigidity because we don't want anything hot landing on those IKEA tabletops. And those, those tabletops uh, are supported by those IKEA Alexes, which are full and also very heavy. So they're a good base, but if they were propped up by normal IKEA legs, uh, they're gonna sway a lot. Without those heavy tiles, the surface will kind of vibrate and sway a bit. Um, I don't really think any printer feet can mitigate that completely. At least I haven't had any results with that. Printer feet might help more with uh, Cartesian printers, uh, especially large high speed ones where you have a relatively heavy bed moving back and forth and the print head moving uh, perpendicular to it. Um, that might help there compared to, compared to an, a Core XY printer in a way. But let me get your opinion on this. Do you use non-stock printer feet? I'd like to know. I think a lot of other people would like to know too. Next up is Framework. Uh, these are a company who have unveiled their new modular laptops. And to go with these, they have open sourced the designs. They're on GitHub right now. So with Framework, you can buy a customizable laptop. And if a part breaks, then you can just hop over to the GitHub, download the STL and print that. Everything is under Creative Commons licensing. So you are free to adapt uh, anything that is there or even sell provided attribution is given and any changes are noted, you can basically do anything with it. I can see a lot of people making crazy mods to their laptop because of this. It also makes right to repair a lot more accessible. Now, obviously, we still need to depend on the primary components of the laptop, but the repairability of the devices is not so much of a challenge because of this. Uh, in other news, Apple are planning to make parts for their Apple Watch Series 10 with 3D printers. That's probably not going to be on GitHub. Sorry. So next up, things that are in the shop. Uh, we now have available for pre-orders the K2 Plus Combo. I've been looking forward to this for a while. We recently had Anycubic's Cobra 3 Combo released, and that was that was great, but uh, it was a Cartesian. This one is gonna be a fully enclosed Core XY. Um, so now it's Creality's time to shine with their AMS clone. I don't, I don't wanna say clone, it might not be a clone. We'll see. This printer is even bigger than the K1 Max. That was a 300 by 300. This is a 350 by 350. It has the same top speed as the Max, but the acceleration is now 30K instead of 20K. Hot end max temperature is 350 degrees and it uses an A plus extruder. 
interesting. And of course their multicolor option, they're calling the CFS color filament system. This holds up to four spools and can be combined to make 16 spools in total. Mm. I'm intrigued. We're getting our test unit soon and there will be a video. I'm excited to try this one. In Snapmaker World, the Artisan Premium is being released soon and they are also releasing a 1064 nanometer laser for some of their printers. Interesting using an IR laser, but apparently this will be able to engrave metal. Cool. And lastly, we have some LDO and Voron news. LDO's RevD version of the Voron 2.4 has been announced and it will be in the shop soon. Notable changes from the RevC is a switch from the uh, BTT Octopus board to the LDO Leviathan board. It is also going to have 48 volt 5160 stepper drivers for the X and Y motors, a Nighthawk SP2 head, uh, Bontex IGDA drive gears, and better LEDs. Okay, that about does it for this month. As always, links for all of the products and stories are down below in the description. If you think we should cover something that has not been covered yet, then you can email us, you can comment down below. You can also join us on our Discord server where there is fun talk on a daily basis. We'll talk to you next time. Later.